Hello everyone, welcome along to another instalment of our FIFA 22 Custom Tactics series. My name is Ash, you'll know me as Brummer18, and today we are taking a look at Simone Inzaghi's Inter Milan Tactics. The 3 5 2, to be exact, has got them playing very, very well so far in the Serie A. Before we do get on to this, a couple of notifications. Um, first things first, for anyone who's already subscribed to the channel, you'll know probably that it has been a while since we've done one of these videos. Had a bit of time off, a bit too much time off, let's face it. Um, but I'm back now and ready to go. Um, so hopefully we can get back into the grind and get a lot more of these tactics done. Second thing, if you haven't already, go and check out my Patreon because on there you can get access to a whole range of different benefits one of which is my custom tactics package and what we do is all the tactics that we do cover on this channel you can get access to a deep dive breakdown of them which does include the likes of pros and cons of each tactic it includes ratings where we give the ratings on recreation on how successful they are on how fun to play they are we can give them uh, all sorts of suitable traits and attributes for each player in each position so you can help you with signing players if you're playing career mode um, you get rankings and stuff suitable teams to play as with the tactic as well a whole range of different stuff and there's loads more perks on top of that we've got some more coming very soon lots more announcements and exciting stuff for that so do go check that out if you haven't done so already on that note let's begin so first things first with this tactic what do we have well it is known as the 3 4 one, two on this game um, but it is a 3-5-2, basically. Um, what you've got is something similar in terms of shape um, and formation to obviously what Antonio Conte did. There are tweaks and changes, something that has made them, I guess, probably more entertaining to play. Not to say that there wasn't understanding under Conte and there wasn't still attacking, but I think Inzaghi has sort of taken that to the next level. Um, so that's something we're going to focus on today. If you haven't watched these videos before, or if you need a bit of a refresher, I'll talk you through the position changes. There aren't any in this one, so that's okay. Then we'll go through the tactics, and then I'll round off with the player instructions. What I will also do is I will also show you an attacking variation where there are some tweaks if, say, it's late on in the game and Inter are behind and they're trying to push for a goal. I'll also show you how the roles may change a little bit depending on different personnel. So if we've got Joaquin Carrera and Martinez up front instead of Dzeko and Martinez, etc. Things like that. So there's a whole range that we can get through today. With the formation, it is the 3-5-2. That means you've got the two defensive midfielders and the cam. It also means the wing-backs, in this case, are right and left midfield. Now, that's very important. Don't worry about the fact that they're not at fullback. It's fine because on the instructions, we'll have them on comeback on defence. And so what the game does a good job of is making them track back and bed into a back five when they need to. What this is going to do, though, it's going to mean they're going to get further forward. And, um, you know, perhaps one of the most important traits of this system of Inzaghi's is that they will the wing backs get forward be very active be a large part of what this team is trying to do so that in itself is very very important on to the tactics so defensively we've got press after possession loss and a very much a counter pressing team what you'll also know though and it's something that we do occasionally in the gameplay that you'll see above me somewhere um, is that occasionally what we can do is you press down and then left on the d-pad on your controller then that will instigate a press for a few seconds you also want to mix that in there as well because what they also do sometimes is when they see the opposition are starting to play themselves into trouble they then instigate a press and it's usually started by one of the two strikers often Lautaro Martinez um, so do bear that in mind as well. The width is on 34. Now, usually what we do in these videos, we have this below 30 because then it's very narrow. But what I do talk about sometimes, and it's a case in point here, is when you've got a free back system and then free midfield as well, you can be a little bit wider because of the fact you've got so many players in the narrow central areas. You can stretch it out a little bit more and it will allow you to get out wider. And that's what we've done here. We've got this on 34. I don't, you don't want to stretch it out too much. Um, when you are in that sort of basis balanced uh, tactic but you do want to get it a bit more so you can get the players to get out to the wide areas if and when they need to the depth is up to 70 that's the lowest it can be when it's a high defensive line if you then go to 69 and below then it goes more balanced this gives you that emphasis on the counter pressing they want to try and play on the front foot and be the aggressor so in this case the 70 will help you there now it's also worth bearing in mind the center backs and we'll talk about them very soon 
um, you know, also have a little bit of pace as well. Um, so that's going to help you employ this higher defensive line. Offensively then, first off we have slow build up play, we want to try and replicate how they play out from the back and that plays into the chance creation which is on possession. Both of these things are looking to play through the thirds, they want to be able to utilise the technical ability they have in their team, the midfield in particular, Brozovic, Barea, Chalanolu, you know, good technical players, it enables you to play it from the back. Again, the centre backs with them being comfortable on the ball um, allow you to do this as well. What I will say is on possession, um, you find a little bit less movement. And that's really something I want to talk about in a tactic overall. This tactic is, is quite hard to master. And that's because you tend to find, because the movement on FIFA is quite lacklustre, paired with the fact that I'm also using my custom sliders, which try and you know make it a little bit less end-to-end -end as well. Uh, do go and check the video out on those custom sliders as well, if you haven't done so already. Um, it means that there's, there's less movement in general. Um, so when you're trying to form attacking moves, it's a bit harder. You've got to do a lot of L, B and A or L1 and X. You've got to try and get the players moving as much as possible. So it is harder to master. That is a drawback of the system, but it does mean you are hopefully a bit safer defensively because you'll have the ball a bit more. So the width then, it's up to 60. Try and stretch it out a little bit more because you've only got one on each side. It does then enable you to keep with the centre back to so try and create a little bit of space. Again, talking about trying to get more movement and everything. A bit wider, not too wide because I don't think you need to. That's really what I came across in when I was experimenting with it. 60 was a nice, good balance. Players in the box, this is on seven and it's going to be roughly three to four. You're going to have the two strikers in there. One of the wing backs will be in there at least. It's usually one of the wing backs crossing the ball in. So it means the other wing back then comes in. You've got Perisic, Dumfries, etc. Um, you know, you've got these guys coming in. Occasionally, someone like Barea may also come into the box as well. Sometimes Chalinolu, but as we'll talk about in the player instructions, Barea probably more. And then corners and free kicks. It's worth bearing in mind. You've got a lot of a lot of height in this team, um, and that's what they're trying to get the most out of. So we've got these both up to four, because you want the three centre-backs in there, you want Dzeko in there, you probably want Perisic in there, maybe Dumfries. Um, you know, there's a lot of height in this team. So with it on four, on both of them, um, then you can really get that um, and, and hopefully cause a bit of a threat. Right then, let's talk about the player instructions. Starting off with Sami Handanovic. Uh, we've got him on come to crosses, um, although he does have a tendency to punch, as you may notice in the game. Pretty sure he does do that a couple of times. Um, and then saving outside the boxes on balance, and it's not necessarily because of the fact that um, it doesn't play into the tactic. It's more to try and replicate him. Now, if you want to cheat a little bit and go away from replicating a tactic, then it would be better to have him on sweeper keeper. But Handanovic himself isn't really that type of keeper who likes to come running out 20, 30 yards out of his box to try and, you know, commandeer and clear the ball. So it is on balance to replicate him. With um, Onana, Andre Onana, who's leaving Ajax to go to Inter, it looks like at the end of the season you will probably start to see that more in action because he's a little bit more active and energetic. Now, with the three centre-backs, they're all on the same. It's something very, very important I do want to talk about with these. Something that's going to open this game up for you a bit more and part of mastering this tactic is the centre-backs. What you'll find is sometimes, in real life, Bastoni and Skriniar will often join the attack. They'll help out um, the team in, in the wide areas. Um, there was a game recently, Inter against... Uh, Lazio, where Bastoni finds himself on the left wing, crosses the ball in, and they score from it. Um, and again, you're trying to get that. Now, obviously, there isn't really an instruction that helps that because if you have it on overlap, you don't want it all the time, um, and also you don't want them going past the wing backs, you want them more inverted. And then on joining the attack, that doesn't work, it just doesn't do anything. So, what you've got to do is you've got to do it manually. Again, LB and A or L1 and X, you want to give the ball, and then you find the centre backs running. And in fact, you might notice in the gameplay, at some point, Bastoni should have scored and very nearly scored all from this, stemming from this. And it helps again, you create more chances, you get more movement. Also, they don't have anyone tracking, and that's part of the whole overlapping centre back um, sort of instruction in general is that it's harder to trap them people teams don't accommodate for them um, so part of that is also uh, worth remembering as well when you are trying to play with this t system next then onto the defensive midfielders we've got two different roles here we'll start off with Brozovic 
In this case, Brozovic is that deeper line playmaker. He's not the one who's going to be getting into the box more. So, we've got him on cut passing lanes uh, to replicate their, their sort of zonal marking orientated system. But then attacking support, he's on stay back while attacking to make sure he's very much screening the defence uh, and providing an, an option um, to recycle possession in attack. And then his positioning freedom is on free roam, and that's what's going to help you, um, you know, to really retain possession more effectively and try and get as much movement as possible into this team, just so he starts drifting around into pockets of space in between the lines as well, and hopefully providing a passing option. Onto Barrera, on the other hand, you have something a little bit different. Still on cut passing lanes, um, but this time positioning freedom is on stick to position, and his attacking support rather than on stay back is actually on balance. And what you've got with Barrera is someone who's more of an industrious midfielder in the sense that he covers more ground, he's willing to do his work in a lot more areas of the pitch, he will get forward sometimes, that's why it's on balance. Not all the time, though. Now, occasionally what you could have done, or what they do in real life, is it very, very occasionally, Brozovic maybe goes and Barella stays. But um, obviously you can't do that. You can't alternate in this game. You have to pick one or the other. So it's better off just having Brozovic as that all out-and-out -out playmaker, deep-line deep playmaker, and then Barella as that more um, you know, sort of all-rounded central midfielder. Not quite box-to-box, -box, but not far off. Next in, on to the wing-backs. Both of these have got the same roles. We've gone with Pedisic and Dumfries. Now, of course, you could have someone like Damian in there or DiMarco as well. There are, um, you know, a range of options they do have. Um, so, their defensive support is on comeback on defence. Um, and that's very important, something that we spoke about earlier. It is going to enable you to, um, you know, be more defensively minded because they're going to trap back and they're going to bed in with the back five. So don't worry about not having wing backs. And then their chance creation is stay wide. These guys, both are the ones creating the width, getting them into as much space as possible. You'll notice in the gameplay, often I'm trying to switch the ball out wide to them, utilise that um, that space that they that is created for them. And then support runs is getting behind. And this is what the most effective free back systems do. You know when a team that's playing that sort of free five back is well coached um, because either it's a free back or a five back because in these well coached free back systems, a Conti system, an Inzaghi system, the wing backs are always just often trying to penetrate the back line, running in behind, acting as that that extra attacker, and that's what they do in this case. Pedersic and Dumfries in particular very very good at this and trying to utilize that clever movement as much as they possibly can finally support on crosses as we spoke about in the tactics both of them are on getting to the box across as well again worth bearing in mind when one of them is crossing the ball naturally they won't be in the box so it's a good way um, to get the balance between Dumfries and Pedersic you don't want them both in the box if you can help it next then on to Hakan Chalanolu uh, we've got comeback on defense first things first to make sure he's tracking back but then support and crosses he's actually stay on the edge of the box with the cross he's going to act as that more advanced pivot whereas Brozovic is that sort of deeper pivot pivot um, and what Chalanolu does is obviously we know his strengths he's very good in those sort of outside the box areas edge of the box areas you know shooting from distance that sort of thing trying to work in those um, more advanced areas so that's what he does best um, and that's why you've got someone like Barella sometimes marching on, going on forward and getting into the box in his stead. Um, and hopefully he'll provide that good layer of protection. The positioning freedom is on drift wide. His role here is actually to support the likes of Dumfries and Perisic as well. You want him with no wingers on the pitch and just wing backs. You want more guys drifting out wide even when they can provide support to the wing backs. Otherwise, they do get isolated. And that's what he's looking to do here. So with positioning freedom, get him on drift wide. You don't want him on free roam because what free roam does is it brings them deeper a lot. That's not what you're looking to do for him. You want him to remain in those more advanced areas. It's just you want him getting out wide even when you can. Next then, on to the two strikers. Now, we'll start off with Dzeko and Martinez. I'll change it a little bit when um, we talk about someone like uh, Joaquin Correa or Alexis Sanchez, for example. So, we've had in Dzeko. We've got him on stay central, stay central and target man. And that's what we're looking to do here. We want him holding the ball up. We want him playing that aerial threat if and when we need to on crosses, on the occasional goal kicks if you want to go long, etc. This is what he can do well. 
He often brings people into play and he's very, very good at it. Also, it's then going to complement someone like Martinez, who we'll talk about in a moment. With defensive support, we've also got him on stay forward. And the reason for this is that he's going to be that out ball. Again, if you want to get the ball at the pitch quickly, you get it to him and he's able to hold the ball up. And then you'll get runners, Martinez, Dumfries, Perisic, etc. All of them running in and around him. And then he can play it off to them. Now, with him on target, man, talk, spoke about how it's going to complement Martinez. And this is how you've got Martinez getting in behind. And that's what it's doing. So he'll hold the ball up. One will stay and then one will go. And this time it is Lautaro Martinez. Very much built around him and his talents. Um, with support runs, he's on drift fired as well. Again, trying to get him to support the likes of Dumfries and Perisic. And then with defensive support, it's this time on basic. But generally, he probably won't be tracking back all that much. Now, how does it change depending on who you have in? Well, if you still got Dzeko in the team, for example, then you've got someone else, you've got Correa or Sanchez in there, the instructions will remain the same. In fact, you'll notice in the gameplay at halftime, Lautaro Martinez did get injured because of a horrendous tackle that wasn't even called for a foul. Um, and as a result, I had to bring Carrera on. Um, we just put him straight in his place and then he does the same role and he does well of setting up the uh, second goal as well. Um, but how it changes slightly is, let's say if you've got Carrera in and then you've got Martinez in, it is a little bit different. This time with Carrera, what you've got is you've got mixed attack and you've also got drift wide as well. And what this does is it just creates more movement. Now, naturally, it does alter your approach a little bit. Perhaps you're going to cross the ball in less, but what it does do is it enables you to play through the thirds more and this time utilise the wing a bit more if you've got a lot more space. You've got him on drift wide. And with him on mix attack, sometimes he'll hold the ball up, sometimes he'll get him behind, etc. And he'll drop off as well. And that's what you're looking for. Um, and it's important to know that someone like Joaquin Correa um, is a lot more physically gifted than what people give him credit for. Look at that. You know, he's six foot two, um, you know, relatively strong, strength in the mid 70s. Um, and he's obviously pacey as well. So he's that sort of more complete forward. Obviously, he used to play at cam so he can drop off as well. You know, he's got a whole range of abilities um, and traits that you can really make the most of. So that's something worth bearing in mind as well, um, is that with Martinez and Carrera at front, it will change um, you know, your approach a little bit. Now then, let's talk about the attacking game plan. Just a couple of tweaks that it will make. Let's say you're, you're trying to press for a goal. You're in the last few minutes or something. You know, they're really going gung-ho. This time, what you'll do is you'll notice a couple of changes. One, the defensive style changes to constant pressure. Just a relentless press, trying to get the ball back as quickly as possible. The whip also changes and increases a little bit to 40 as well. Just to try and complement that press. Try and get out to the any wide players who get the ball a little bit quicker. And the depth increases as well to 80. Again, worth bearing in mind, you've got fast centre-back, Skriniar, De Vrij, etc. Bastoni, his pace is, is underrated on this, um, but he's still relatively fast for a centre-back, got those long strides as well. Um, so they can all enable you to play that, um, that defensive line. And then with players in a box, this moves up to eight this time. So you've got four in the box rather than seven last time. And then the corners and free kicks will also change. You'll have corners and free kicks both up to five. There's also a couple of uh, changes with the player instructions as well. Barella this time, rather than on balanced attack and support like he was before, this time he's on get forward. And that is just going to make him getting into the box as much as possible in crossing situations, making runs in beyond the strikers as well very very important that's what's going to give you that attacking emphasis right then that will just about round it off for this system again guys if you've got any um, sort of questions about the tactic don't hesitate to get at me in the comment section and just ask um, and i'll do my best to get back to you um, as always go and check out my patreon i spoke about lots of great perks we've got going on there got my fifa 22 custom tactics package and we've got a whole range of other things as well been very quiet on there recently so i'm extremely sorry for that um, but we will get back on it um, so very much looking forward to that if you've enjoyed the video and you want to see more ring the bell and subscribe so you get notifications every time i upload don't forget to drop a like on the video always helps let me know you're enjoying the content give me a follow on twitter the link to that is in the description the links are also in there to um any of my equipment um, you know microphone gaming pc parts uh, equipment all that good stuff just give a channel a little kickback and it's a great way to support me without spending any more money on that note we're gonna round it off there thank you so much for watching and until next time i will see you soon